Hello. Welcome back to NBC News. I'm Dusa Dragonash and the team is all here. Our little testosterone chocolate bunnies. Okay, editorial clarity, welcome. Chocolate bunny. Nice. <laughs> Hi. Sigmund Learminster, welcome. And a chocolatey good evening from me. And Mal Burns writer, welcome. Mmm, chocolate bunny indeed. I I'm a purple Christmas egg. Oh. Uh, uh, Easter egg. <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost already. Carry on with it. <laughs> and how do you eat your egg? Okay. Japan is still struggling with the aftermath of the earthquake effects on the nuclear plants with levels of plutonium found in the earth around one of the sites. And at least 37 people, including two children, have been killed in growing demonstrations in Syria against the government. The American Academy of Pediatrics has a new report coming out in the April edition of their journal called Pediatrics that looks at the effects of social media on children. Well, surprise, surprise, the conclusion is that they can be both helpful and harmful. That the dangers that are mentioned include cyberbullying, sexting, privacy problems, and simply lack of sleep. Now, the figures from a recent report on teens and technology pretty much confirm what we might already suspect, namely that 22% of teenagers log on to their favorite media sites more than 10 times a day, and that 75% of teens now own cell phones, of which 25% use them for social media, 54% for texting, 24% for instant messaging. Now, the report, which is actually in a readable seven pages long, is available at the Academy's website at www.aap.org forward slash press room. I think I need new glasses because I saw that as AAP oppression. Right. Now, virtual worlds are being investigated for evidence of money laundering operations. At a conference in Sydney, Detective Superintendent Commander Colin Dyson said that the cyber criminals were using virtual gaming platforms to communicate and transfer funds around the globe. Dyson declined to name which virtual worlds were under investigation, noting only that they were a growing area of interest for state and federal cybercrime fighting teams. However, with Second Life's published figures of having over 20 million registered users, it's quite likely that Second Life will be one of the target worlds. And some weeks back, we reported on the opening of the 2011 Virtual Worlds Challenge, which is sponsored by the U.S. Army's Research Laboratory. Now, on March 24th, the winners were announced at an event in front of a live and virtual audience of over 600 individuals. The grand prize of $25,000 was awarded to Innovative in Learning, Inc., who are the developers of Clinispace, a virtual clinical training environment. Right, and now look forward in one of these astonishing revelations to a funeral that will keep their loved ones hopped up on caffeine. The owners of the Tarantine Morrow Jackson Funeral Home have installed a coffee store inside their facility and now sell Starbucks as well as flowers and caskets. One of the co-owners, Terry Tarantine, said that our clients have been spoiled by Starbucks and are used to having custom types of coffee. We finally felt it would be okay to extend this type of service to our customers. It fits our philosophy of having everything you need at one location. It's nice to think that just before being dropped into one's final resting place, you can have one last order to go. And now it's over to Mal for Tech Spot. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Lisa. Well, and let's start with a few, a few things here. Uh, the co-founder of Twitter, a chap called Jack Dorsey, is returning to active duty. He's now going to be executive chairman to oversee product development. Um, it beggars belief that Twitter can develop any more, to be honest, but we'll see about <laughs> that. <clears throat> right. Um, some time ago, we had an inv uh, um, a uh, former engine here uh, talking about uh, a new web um, interface for virtual worlds called Canvas, and uh, he's just informed us that it has now become um, it's being known as builtbyme.com, and uh, that ties in nicely uh, with uh, the other tech items, all of which uh, really have to do with uh, open sim developments. 
Uh, firstly, the very popular um, virtual world in Worlds, which is probably one of the open sim worlds that comes closest to Second Life in its sort of um, uh, atmosphere and um, attitude, um, has introduced its own simplified scripting engine um, so that people using in Worlds will now be able to compile scripts in world, in Worlds, if you see what I mean, <laughs> um, much easier than they can um, in somewhere like Second Life. Although uh, they do stress that the scripting engine um, is actually backwards compatible with um, LSL and Mono, which are the ones used in Second Life. <clears throat> Um, another um, company has popped up, and they are called uh, Pioneer X, and they are offering a new tool for the Open Sims, for, uh, which is basically what they call no f no fuss grid management, and um, it, it comes from the people who launched the Third Rock Grid um, back in um, spring two thousand and eight. And um, basically, um, it simplifies the process of installing software and maintaining regions and stuff like that. And um, the reports of this are actually quite good. Uh, if you want to know more about this, check out hypergridbusiness.com. And uh, it was a post from um, the news yep, last Tuesday. Uh, you'll find that one there. You can also find more about the uh, Inworlds business at the um, same address, Hypergrid Business. Right. Now, um, we have one really rather big thing um, this week. Um, it's the launch of something called Kitely. Um, it, it's, it's a beta launch, but um, it, and it's spelled K-I-T-E-L-Y. And it's basically an open sim-based virtual world that can, um, that can um, host open sims, regular open sims. Uh, but it uses Facebook as the login tool. And you can access it via a web interface. So um, in the last few days, lots of educators and people like that have been... <coughs> getting very keen on this because they simply go to the website, download the plugin, and then they can log in by using, I imagine it's Facebook Connect, and um, then they can um, get into virtual worlds that way. And um, for people um, setting setting up open sims, I mean, um, you know, you're often talking about a $1,000 setup fee and then $300 a month uh, US. Um, Kitely have taken a completely different approach and um, you can actually host something like a hundred person event um, using Amazon cloud servers um, for about uh, $20 an hour, which is um, a massive reduction on the kind of cost people have been paying um, up to now. And of course, for educators who tend to be strapped for cash, uh, this is really going down the treat. So if you'd like to find out more, try uh, check out kitely.com. That's K-I-T-E-L-Y dot com. And um, it's an on-demand service I hasten to add too. So, I mean, you can literally, um, you know, um, just book it for two hours, hold a virtual event with 100 people, and then um, you don't pay anything else if you want to have another event. So um, all good on that front. And I think that's about it. So back over to you, Dooza. Thank you, Mal. That's very interesting, isn't it? But it is is a temporary thing, presumably, as opposed to you going in and developing your own virtual world for any length of time. Um, I think they are like actually offering... I think they are actually offering hosting services and stuff too, but um, okay. they're, they're, they're real, um, the, the, the clincher for them basically is firstly they will organize it so you don't need a separate avatar name, you will be able to log in as your Facebook ID, and um, secondly they are specifically targeting a service where you can literally book a virtual event and they'll use one of their cloud servers to put it on for you and um, you know, at a ridiculously cheap price apparently. Any comments from the um, rest of our esteemed colleagues? You know, I think we, uh, I remember last year we covered a lot of 
virtual worlds coming and going and we did talk a lot about the notion of more and more grids appearing and it's interesting that this one uh, is another one and again I, I like that notion of going through Facebook um, so clearly you know we're seeing another extension here of how people can interact in virtual worlds mm. About you, yeah, Eddie? the very idea that I could be, you know, I could just go online to host a virtual event in there for up to 100 people, which sounds great. And right, then all, yeah. all I've got to do is Facebook it to my friends and they all get it and they will um, literally use their own Facebook ID to log in and join me. So Absolutely, good yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Eddie, what do you reckon to that? I just go with the flow normally. I don't really think too much of it. <laughs> Fair enough. Whatever you know. And that sums up a number of feelings actually for me. Um I just find I I'm seeing pros and cons and pros and cons. That sounds like a big discussion to me, so I think we might have a look at that later on at some other time. Uh thanks very much, Mal. And uh and now for these messages. <laughs> And welcome back. Uh, we're now going over to Lisa Armano for a roving report. Hello, everyone, and we are here today at the Pop Art Lab Sim. This sim is absolutely breathtaking. It's a sim where you can come, relax, chill, and listen to different genres of music. The sim is dedicated to music. They have regular performers and live artists. And earlier today, we spoke to the owner and creator of Pop Art Labs, Klaus Eurisha. Klaus has actually recently um, just finished a competition, a Machimana competition, and he was very excited to tell NBC News all about it. We got this idea about uh, creating a music video for, for a very cool uh, uh, band uh, playing uh, from Copenhagen, where I live in uh, real life. And uh, they have actually made a, a tune called Pixelated Truth, with this, which is about uh, gaming. And uh, I thought it would be cool to, to make a video for them. And, uh, and, I, and then we set up this contest and they, uh, they uh, gave, gave us the right to, to use that tune. And uh, we, we had uh, one month, uh, I think, where, where machinima makers could come record this. How did the girls feel about the video? When they saw these videos, uh, they, first of all, they, they didn't knew or they said, oh, do we get eight videos or ten videos? Uh, are you sure you get that for, for only that we only had 50,000 Lintons for a prize? And I said, yes, oh. I, I, I think so. So so the, the first one, they, well, they actually liked them very much because uh, they you know, they, they made the lyrics for this song, and when you write a song, you have a, a, an amount of pictures inside your, your mind, and, and when you see other people, uh, uh, what's called, uh, uh, express what they... Expressing themselves, yes. Yes, it. So, so that process, uh, I think they find, found very interesting, and, uh, and actually they, they loved the, uh, many of the movies, uh, many of the films. What did they um, actually think of Second Life? Originally, the plan was that they should come to my uh, real-life uh, house 
and and we would I would uh, connect them into Second Life, uh, so they had a chance to walk, you know, and then we we would place them in these uh, seats here. Uh, but but the problem was that they were touring, uh, and one of the girls were sitting in a in a in a flight uh, when we had to do the interview. The other girl was in uh, New York City, and the the last one was in Copenhagen. Well, so we had to put them up on Skype, and and then we had to uh, had people to control the avatars. Wow. So of course. Of course, that part wasn't op- optimal, but but at least you yeah. know they, they the girl I had here in my real life house. She 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 uh, was sitting looking inside second life screens, and and she 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 really felt the the atmosphere and and loved it. Well, it is. I mean, it is a really excellent video. Can uh, viewers or people see this on YouTube, or where can they go to to actually yes, see? They- Yes, they can see uh, the winning video uh, both at the popartlet.com uh, site and all the videos are, are at the YouTube uh, slash uh, Pop Art Lab. NBC News have had an absolute blast on Pop Art Labs. Please don't forget to check out their videos. And this is Lisa Romano handing back to the studio while I play my drums. Thank you, Lisa. Now, um... A website in California has paid 950,000 US dollars to EMI Group after they were ordered to do so by the California court, I think, for selling Beatles songs and other artists' songs online. It's reported that the site, bluebeat.com, claimed that the music was not as the original, but re-recorded, and Hank Razin, the boss of Associated Company MRT, claimed that psychoacoustic simulations are my synthetic creation of that series of sounds which best expresses the way I believe a particular melody should be heard as a live performance. Um, Yes. Right. The the judge was less than (laughs) impressed and gave a series of sounds that uh, I think came down to psycho babble, actually, I think that's... And dismissed it and charged them 950,000 US dollars. That's a great way of actually phrasing, you know, we ripped them off. In a, yeah. in a in a much more much more pleasant sounding way, I suspect. But uh, um, I, I I do like that. That's a great excuse. But yes, pay up and uh, be done with it. <laughs> Racketeers with words. Psychoacoustic <laughs> simulations. Love it. Great. Word. <laughs> in the studio tonight, we have Lucy Eberhardt, who's going to be here with us to tell us a little bit about a new upcoming series. And I'm going to take the role here of being the average person who's watching this show and say that I know nothing about it. So, so Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about what are the Desperate Housewives and why are they so desperate? Okay, well, the really Desperate Housewives of Beaver Ridge is sort of a spoof off of two real-life series, the Desperate Housewives and the Real Housewives series. Um, It's really stereotypical, so we're making fun of um, rednecks in general, um, just playing off of those stereotypes, talking about um, how they're inbred, how they uh, live in trailer parks. Uh, Even though I'm from the South, we're going to be making fun of Southerners, and um, we're going to have... It's kind of got a mystery to it as well as being a comedy. So uh, during the series, we're going to try to solve the mystery of why Corianne has uh, committed suicide. <laughs> so, uh, so exactly how many Desperate Housewives do we have? Uh, let's see. I think that there are six housewives. In, the, in our series, including our newcomer. And how did this all come about? I mean, you, you said that you're inspired, of course, by the uh, TV shows, but uh, why do this in Second Life? Um, well, my friend Marcy Thorne and myself, we've been playing around with it, kind of making up skits with it for the past year and a half or so, and we finally decided, you know, it would make a really good TV show instead of just putting it on for the rest of our friends or writing about it. We should just make it into a TV show and share it with the world. 
Now you just said what a year and a half to do this. Um, well, that's when we started doing it on our own, and we've been working with NBC for the past six months to produce it here in Moral. And the show itself, how long is an episode, and how long is the series going to run? Um, each episode is under 10 minutes, and uh, I think we're going to have eight episodes in a season, um, and hopefully have multiple seasons. All goes well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, why would people want to come and see the Desperate Highs Wives? What is it that's going to attract people to the show particularly, do you think? Um, well, we're very unique in that we are unscripted. It's just like, uh, ah. you know, it's totally ad-libbed, so you never know what's going to come out of their mouths, but it, it works. Our cast is very talented a lot of them have um, theatrical experience in, in SL and RL so um, it makes for a very interesting take on things and, and during the uh, the run up to uh, you know, deciding to do this you said six months to do that um, you know did that give you time to sort of develop characters or are are other people really sort of like that anyway? Um, well, no, the characters are definitely um, all on their own. Um, each one is kind of a stereotype that you would think of when you, when you think of the Deep South. Um, so it, it'll be fun to see how it, it plays out. Some of them are made off of um, real-life characters like uh, Anna Nicole Smith. We have a character based on her. <laughs> Um, so it, it's, it's going to be fun to see, to see it come out and see how everyone reacts to it. And so when does this start? When is this going to be airing? We're going to be premiering it this coming Saturday, April the okay. 2nd. Okay. So April the 2nd, this Saturday. Uh, so if people are looking to have something to do, that would be the time and the place. Right. Okay, well, thanks a lot, and uh, it's back to the rest of the folks in the studio. And now over to Eddie for public service announcements. Thank you. Alrighty, so I've got a few things this week. Uh, at the weekend, Mr. Costa Rica Sims 2011 was crowned. Uh, the crown went to Phoenix Raya uh, and will represent Costa Rica Sims for the next year. Uh, the event took place at the Costa Rica Sims Opera House in front of a pretty packed audience. I went for the most of it. and uh, But the former Mr. Costa Rica Sims, who is Todd Anton, uh, he seems to have vanished from SL, so he wasn't in a attendance unfortunately so it's a bit of gossip for you that's I thought I'd mention that right um, mm -hmm. uh, claim the fame which is a brand new show on uh, metaverse TV is starting this week April 6th uh, and if you've already been onto the website you may have seen the promo video that has been there basically it's kind of like project runway and they're the judges of SL Architecture are on their journey to find the next big rising designing star in SL. So if you want to tune into that, that's going to be going on for a while as well. So uh, that'll be on Metaverse TV. Uh, I hear Boston they've got a really handsome presenter, Eddie. Really? Mm. I've been I think hearing the word rumors, is out. But... Yeah. Who is yeah, it? Do you know? We'll have to wait till April 6th to find out. Yeah, true. I guess. Yes, there we go. Um, but I can't wait to see that. Um, Barcelona Awards nominations uh, were sent out, the nominees for the 22 categories, and caused quite a bit of uh, controversy. I've, uh, I've, I've kept my eyes off the forums, I think. Uh, and Metaverse TV were nominated for some, and also uh, Robustus Hex as well was nominated for so. one biggie so yeah you'll have to tune into that that's going to be live on metaverse tv april 23rd at 11 a.m so tune in for that and also burn 2 is underway which used to be burning live uh that's underway in world now you can get more information on that www.burn2.org and from me that's it for this week no okay everyone we have concluded our version of mbc news for this week and we're very happy that you've listened to us, watched us, and we hope that you continue to do so. 
and um, it just remains for the gentlemen of our team to say goodbye. Goodbye, and we'll see you next week. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good tomorrow, depending on wherever and whenever you are. And exactly what Mal said. Yep. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. And um, stay safe. Remember, see you next week.